Hi, and welcome to the new episode of the Home Assistant running on Synology. Today, we are going to install ZigBee to MQTT Docker container. We'll start in 10 seconds. Before we go into today's episode, I have a brief announcement. As a token of appreciation to all of my subscribers, until the 25th of the October, I will be giving away three CC2531 USB ZigBee sticks. All you have to do, of course, is be a subscriber and leave down a comment with hashtag ZigBee. Although ZigBee sticks, of course, will come with the latest available firmware, so you just have to plug them in and enjoy your ZigBee network at home. Thank you. Before we start, uh, I have two presumptions. First of all, that you already have CC2531 stick and that it is already flashed with the latest release of firmware. For the instructions on how to flash the USB stick, um, you can check down the link in the description. Don't forget to insert the USB stick into the USB port. Let's start. First of all, we have to open up PuTTY and connect to Synology via terminal. So I'll just double click here. Okay, we have to type in the password. We have to once again create a directory where we will be holding our uh, permanent files. So make directory and we'll use the same folder structure that we used before. Volume 1 docker uh, we will just add here the name of the new directory. It will be called zigb2mqtt. And that's it. What we have to do also is create subfolder. So we will make additional folder inside of this. We just copy the command. Uh, you can use the up arrow to do that. And type in the name of the folder. It will be data. And this is it. And we will now list all the devices we have attached to our Synology. If we scroll up, we should see here this. TTYACMO is what the Synology has mapped its internal device name with the external CC2531 USB stick. Okay, so we are now sure that our Synology has, very, uh, has found the device. Let's clear this and let's type the sudo command. sudo super user do docker run. Again, we will be starting it as a daemon. We will be naming it uh, correctly this time. I've seen on Twitter that finally uh, Zigbee, Zigbee Foundation has clarified uh, what is the correct typing of the name. So it's only capital Z. You don't have to make capital B. This is correct naming. Then we will map once again uh, our uh, container uh, address with the host address. So we will be using our Synology host IP address. For the time zone, we will map it with my time zone I used previously. So it's time zone equals Europe and Zagreb, capital of Croatia. We can now map what device we want to use for this. So we'll type device equals and we will type dev. This is the folder that we just listed previously. And the name of the device is TTYASMO. We will instruct it to restart always. And now we will map the folder we created previously. So it's volume one docker zigb2mqtt data with the app data folder inside the uh, docker container. And the last part of the parameter for downloading and installing is, of course, to give the name of the container we want to, or image we want to download and uh, install. So it's K O 
A and KK, Zig B to MQTT. And I'm using last couple of days, or I'm switching between the latest release, the latest dev release, so I'll put here latest. That's it. Let's now press enter. And it's installed. Let's go back to the Synology. We'll type exit here. Let's open a file station. And Zigbee to MQTT folder. Data and we already have some uh, variables and files created by the system. Let us change screen to container. Okay, let's check this. We have seven images uh, active and seven containers. And MQTT is up and running. We will now stop it. We'll Select this, press stop, and the container has been stopped. Let's go back to the Synology. Let's check the configuration file it created. So, it does create some uh, defaults, but we nevertheless have to add bits and parts of it. First of all, uh, it defaults to Home Assistant false. We want to put this to true. Uh, for now, we will leave permit join. This allows us to add Zigbee devices. But please, when you finish adding your Zigbee devices, uh, change this to false. If there is a request, I will post a video and configuration on how to enable and disable joining of new Zigbee devices from inside Home Assistant with a timer. So for example, uh, default value, I think, and what I'm using is two minutes. It allows you to pair a device inside two minutes and after two minutes it expires and changes this variable to false. After that, we have to verify our Zigbee topic, sorry, MQTT topic and uh, server. The uh, base topic is Zigbee to MQTT. This is correct, but for um, MQTT server address, we have to change local to our Synology address since we are using MQTT on our uh, Synology Docker, so it's 192.168.1.109 and I will put here a port number just in case at its default, 1883. Uh, we are not using username and password, so we will not be typing any username and password. In my home setup I am using it, but in this uh, demo videos I will not be using it. Uh, next, what uh, it's not necessary, but I like to have, since then I can track information from both log files inside Zigbee to MQTT, but also from MQTT, is to name this client. What this name uh, client ID or client name does when this instance or Zigbee to MQTT logs in into the MQTT, MQTT will write in login file name of the client. So I just name it Zigbee to MQTT and that's how I know inside log file if there is success or not uh, with the login or connecting between those two applications. And last thing I use, it's not also necessary, it's to include device information in, in MQTT string. So it's include device. Formation. And of course, we have to type this to be true uh, to enable it. This can be a clutter inside your log files, but I like to see it because then I have on every place I have device uh, reporting change of status, I also have full device information. Maybe I'm wrong on why it's used, but I use it for that. We have now defined that we are using Home Assistant, we are allowing uh, joins, uh, we also have uh, changed the server name, uh, gave it client ID and we are including this information. Okay, so 
this port definition is something that we have configured when we started the Docker container. What I also like to do is type in a command to disable LED lights. If you still haven't used CC2531, you don't know how strong those LED lights on the USB stick are. They are red and green, or mostly green if everything is okay. Uh, they can really glow sometimes too much. So usually I type here a true, but for testing purposes, we will also be typing here false for now. Later on, you can of course change it to true to disable uh, LED lights. And I think this is it. It's also possible to add some additional uh, advanced commands. For example, advanced and here we can define home assistant discovery topic. This is also used for MQTT, home assistant discovery topic. And of course, this discovery topic is home assistant. But as I said, this is not necessary. We are done with configuration of a Zigbee to MQTT. We will now save this. And we can now go back inside the portainer to uh, restart it. We will select it and start. Okay. Running for a few seconds. Let's check statistics for the CPU and memory, since we cannot see statistics for the network. It's only using about yeah, 45, 46 megabytes of RAM and it's idling CPU at 0%. Next thing we will do is, of course, we will add device. I will be adding for this test two devices. Uh, Xiaomi devices. One is a temperature humidity sensor and the other one is a button. I will post the link to the mail day video where I open them, but this video will be available later in a couple of weeks since I have a backlog of mail day videos. Let us now try and pair this Xiaomi switch. I have to use needle for this and insert in the hole and hold it for six, seven seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's now trying to pair and according to the three blinking, fast blinking lights, it should be paired. Okay, let's go into the logs. It seems that our device is connected. And let's pair the humidity and temperature sensor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it also says that it is paired. So how can we be sure that device is paired or not? There are two ways you can check for the devices. One of them is to go back to the Synology and the other one is to Home Assistant. For this, we will now go to the Synology. Let's refresh this folder. And let's open this file. So, as you can see, the format of the file changed because all the comments have been removed. And we now have two devices here. Uh, in order, if we add more than one device and we want to know what device is what, we can go to JSON file. And in JSON file, we, ha we can see that there are two different devices. One is measuring temperature and humidity. So, this is our temperature and humidity sensor. And this is the device ID. And this will match this device. And the other one is giving just link quality. This is the uh, Xiaomi switch. 
and this is the second device so for us to be able to find them we can just type in temperature temperature sensor and the other one will be switch that's good enough for this demonstration we'll save this and I said that there are two ways this is one way what we also can do here we can also add formatting for example uh, we can change the icon that's uh, visible in the uh, home assistant but for this let's first head back to home assistant the other way to see when device is added to see it is in configuration and integrations and you will see here MQTT configuration file so we have two devices one is wireless switch and the other one is temperature and humidity sensor uh, as I said we are able to customize uh, those icons here through additional configuration in the Zigbee to MQTT configuration file but for now I will not touch anything what I always do when I add new devices I change name so for example let's say that this temperature and humidity sensor will be positioned in the bathroom so we will call it bathroom and we can add area uh, no area we we still haven't added bathroom so no problem okay then next thing what i want to do is change this name because it's easier if we add sensors or manipulate values in automations to have more human readable name than device id so we can do it like this we just change this for example for bathroom and also say and as you can see now we have new sensor or renamed sensor called the bathroom battery and this full name of the sensor is sensor dot bathroom underscore battery let's do this for every other sensor here Now we have one sensor completely renamed, let's do it for the other. And that's it, our new Zigbee uh, Xiaomi switch and temperature humidity sensor has been added. Uh, of course now we can add configurations and automations, but for now let's just add them here. Uh, in the weather I'll add a new this will be a bathroom for example history graph uh, And we now have two values for the bathroom temperature and bathroom humidity. And this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any question or comment, please leave it down below to the comment section. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please press like button. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified of the future videos. And I will be seeing you in the next video. Until the next time, bye bye.